Now I'll send you the chemistry, uh, as much chemistry as I can, if you ask me to, and my email and everything will be at the very end of this presentation. But I like making things simple and easy to understand. So, I'm not much of an actor, but I'm going to ask you to play along with my theatrical presentation here, so I can try to create some understanding. Because understanding is more important than knowledge. And so, what we have, this is a plastic cup, like you'd get in your kitchen, and that's where I'm at. I'm in the kitchen of Pulp Pen, <laughs> the other laboratory. <laughs> we have so many cultures of people in our company, you never know what's cooking in that kitchen. And so, this plastic cup has got boiling water in it, and that's the steam from the boiling water. Now, what I'd like you to do is pretend that's the resin of Activa, okay? The resin, not the fillers, the resin. So, Activa's resin contains acidic monomers. I mentioned MDP. MDP is a highly phosphate, acidic phosphate-based product. It's in all self-etching primers, all of the new universal bonds from 3M. Now that the patents are off, everybody's using MDP. And we just made our own version of it 20 years ago. And so what you're looking at is the resin. It has not just the acidic monomer polyacrylic, or it also has polyacrylic acid. Now, we have polyacrylic acid in there for a reason. It's not very aggressive. It's kind of slow, but we wanted that. We wanted an aggressive acid that would trigger reactions right away. That's in the MDP type product. And then the polyacrylic acid just keeps bringing on what? It reacts with the fluoroaluminous silicate, one of the fillers in Activa, or the, what we call bioactive fillers, because it is. And so that, just what's in glass ionomer is reacting in Activa, and what does it do? It melts. Oh, I just gave away my whole movie. <laughs> so, we also added in this resin the, um, the rubberization, again, to prevent chipping and cracking. We have yet to have a reported case of Activa to, uh, to us of an Activa chipping or cracking in four years and over four million restorations since we came on the market. And so it also makes it tough. And believe me, you know, we've, we're defying all the materials people, and when I get to the wear factors, you'll, you'll know why. So in this uh, theatrical presentation, I'm gonna ask you to pretend, here's your alumina fluorosilicate, there's your calcium, there's your phosphate fillers, these are bioactive glasses, they're ice. Okay, all right, you guys are sharp. <laughs> so what happens when the two parts of the syringe come together in the mixing tip? There's these two acid reactions taking place. One is very fast, One's coming along right behind it. So you get this response, of course. I thought I had already clicked it. So you get these reactions of the fillers and the resins. This is where we have a terrible time with the, with the market. You know, we tell people there's 54% filler in it. They go, well, that's not very much. They go, well, what's really happening is once that material hardens, whether you did it with your light or your self-cure, you got one solid mass of material. 